but hordes of young testosterone-driven men cannot be relied upon to invent their own disciplines. Process must be given to them from above. And it was fortunate for the industry that right at that moment, 1970, someone wrote a paper, his name was Winston Royce, the paper was called uh, The Development of Large-Scale Software Systems, and the first page of that paper had this diagram on it. And everybody looked at that diagram and said, yes, that's what we need. Now they didn't bother to read the paper, because the paper went on to say, please don't do this. <laughs> but it doesn't matter, because they just looked at that first page and said, yes, yes, this must be the way it makes so much sense, we're going to do it this way. And this process got imposed upon the young, testosterone-driven young men, like me. And we suffered through it for 30 years. From 1970 until roughly 2000, that was the domain. That was what we were taught to do. Analyze, design, implement. We could never make it work. We always blamed ourselves. That's just because we didn't do it right. We didn't do enough analysis. We need to go back and do more analysis, more design. We're ready getting into code too fast. Over and over went around this loop. Until about 2000, when a bunch of us said, you know, maybe this is a bad idea from the start. A guy by the name of Kent Beckin did the Extreme Programming book, and Ken Schwaber and Jeff Sutherland did the Scrum book, and people started thinking about, well, maybe there's a better way, and eventually we all met at a place called Snowbird, and we wrote the Agile Manifesto, and all that stuff happened. And the whole Agile revolution kind of turned us around. So now we're not so focused on waterfall and we've escaped that early problem.